Now let's go ahead and create a brand new form. To do this, we click the Create Form button. Once in here, it immediately brings us to our Form Properties page. This is just a high-level overview of the Form Properties page. For more information, check out our Customer Success Center articles or use our Show Me How tool. Let's go ahead and click the Create button. Once we start creating a form, we're immediately brought to the default form builder view. On the left hand side, we have a list of elements that you're able to add to your form. By selecting one of these, it'll immediately show up in this device view. So let's go ahead and add the date element. You'll now see it within this device view. You'll also see the actions um, similar to what we had within the table view with the copy as the first action. And then we also have a cut and delete. The cut works out really well if you're trying to move one or more elements to a different part of the form. Within this device view, you have some additional configurations. If you want to change the device size, we have this little icon. As we move across the screen and go past the device, we now see our element properties. Based off of the element type, we'll change what you see in the property list. Let's go through some of the menu options at the top. The first one you'll notice is this minimize button. This will hide the element list, and then when you're ready to view it again, you can click the expand button. Next over is the device view, which we're currently in. If you really liked that table view, you can always jump into that view as well by clicking the third icon here on, on the left-hand menu. Once clicking the table button, I'm able to see a very similar view that I had in the form home page. Let's continue to go through our menu options. So if we scroll all the way to the right, you'll see the dependencies of a form. Next to the dependencies is our save button. Make sure to save your form as often as possible. Click this middle button here to return back to the edit form properties. The second to last icon we see allows you to add page level JavaScript. Now the last part I want to show you here is at the very bottom where it says form name, form label, and version. If you've built forms before within iForm Builder, you're probably used to how the option lists work. But with this latest form builder interface, you actually have two different ways that you can ha add option lists to your form quickly. The first route I'm going to show you is from the form builder interface itself. So let's go back to the default view by clicking the device view. Once in here, I'm going to expand the element list. When you're adding an option list to your form, you have three different types of option lists you may want to add. You have the select element, the multi-select, as well as the pick list. For this example, I'll just go ahead and choose the select option list. Once I've added one of the option lists, if I scroll down in the element properties section, I now see this new area that says option list. This is where I'm able to attach an existing option list or I can create a new option list for this particular element. So let's go ahead and click where it says option list. And at the very top of this menu, I see the currently assigned one. Now we actually haven't assigned one to this select option list yet, but it always defaults to the top one that you have in your account. I can create a new option list from clicking the create list button at the bottom left. So I'll just go and call this home inspection example and click create. Now I have to find this list to then edit it. So I'm gonna go ahead and search for home inspection example. And once I have it, I'm gonna select that row. And now I have the ability to add the labels and key values to my option list. Let's go ahead and start adding to our option list. Oops. At this point, after I've added home one, the key value's already been created, and I can either click the plus button here or hit the enter button on my keyboard. Once I do that, I'm able to add another option to my list. After I'm done adding everything, I'm going to click the check mark in the actions to confirm that I've completed adding that option, and then I'm going to save the list. And at the very bottom, the last step is to assign selected. 
And now I'm just going to save the form. Now that was one way to add an option list to your form. Let's go about and do the second way, which is probably my preference. The first thing I need to do is build my form and then put in option list elements. And I'm going to choose a pick list and I'm also going to choose a multi-select. At this point, we're going to pretend that we've built out our form in its entirety. And all that's left is to create our option list and assign them to this form. 